Good morning, wrestling fans. Happy July 20th, 2022. Almost. Uh, wait a minute. No, when's, Linda, when's the halfway point to Christmas? Have we missed that already? Or is it coming up? Is it in June uh, or July? I keep forgetting it. I don't know the exact date that it would be, but it would be. Or if you look at it just numerically, the end of June. But <laughs> as far as the days, uh, it might actually be July. We might be past that halfway point. But so here's... Okay. Yeah, here's here's my here's my question is you you never hear about Christmas in June. You hear about Christmas in July sales. Yeah. So theoretically you would think that July would be the halfway point, but if you do it numerically, it would be June. Um I guess maybe if you divide the days and you know Meathead Meathead's got a good knuckle trick for the uh the days of the uh the month or how many days have 30 days or something like that. Maybe he's got a knuckle trick for uh figuring out exactly when you're halfway to Christmas, but whether it be Christmas time or 4th of July or your birthday or a special occasion or not a special occasion, if you had to write out a Christmas list of your favorite apparel, Linda, who would be high atop that list? That would be collar and elbow. Make sure, go, make sure to go to collarandelbowbrand.com and check out the latest and greatest in wrestling street fashions. We are right, uh, maybe we're smack dab in the middle of summer uh, if we're going to go um, Equinox or uh, something wise like that. So get that summer apparel in line, collarandelbowbrand.com. And to save a little cash, to save 10% off your order, go to, I'm sorry, use promo code <laughs> Linda K. That's L I N D A K A Y to save 10% off your order. Oh, really quick, Matthew. Um, since you mentioned um, middle, the middle of stuff, fun fact, and I believe this sign is true, but I'm always in a car passing it, so I never get a picture of it. But um, as I discussed yesterday, I was just up in Kadat, Wisconsin this past weekend for Rockfest. And they have this sign that I see every time I enter and leave Kadat, and I always never have my camera ready. But apparently, Kadat, Wisconsin is the halfway point, the middle point of the North Pole and the equator. Oh, my goodness. Right, so you're right between Santa Claus and whoever lives at the equator. Yes. Yes. And I, I was like, is that even true? But then I'm thinking, well, I just got to, you know, pull out my uh, my recent atlas or globe and see that it <laughs> and you, like you that travel you travel with both don't you yes yes i do who needs an a, a, a app or gps when you can whip out the old uh, map uh, atlas <laughs> you know fold it back up put it in the back seat um seat thingy behind the front seat i should say but uh no i gotta look that up to confirm that but i think that does match up but anyways uh since we're talking about halfway points, that one just kind of stuck out to me. No, absolutely. That's a that's a pretty that's a pretty uh, significant uh, claim there to be halfway between the North Pole and the equator. So uh, you, you got to think that that's just a boom for their tourism industry. I mean, if you, there's a sign, there's a there's a shirt, there's a hat, there's a refrigerator magnet. If not, then I think that you know that's a that's a business opportunity waiting to happen there. Uh, yeah. Well, Linda, we've got a couple bits of news. Would you like the good news or the bad news first? Well, not not that one's necessarily bad news, but it's not as as optimistic as the other. Uh, how about we go with the bad news? Oh, oh, that guy was on uh, NXT last night, I think. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he he was on there. Well, uh, HBO Real Sports, uh, no stranger to Vince and the WWE. F slash WWE, depending on the era we're talking about. Apparently, they do have a uh, story in the works about all of the uh, recent allegations uh, concerning Vince McMahon. No uh, time or date when that is set to air, uh, but it is uh, it's definitely apparently in the works. And there have been various uh, interview requests. So something is a cooking uh, on the HBO network in regards to uh, Vince and the, and the story that they are working up. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, there's lots of shows right now. Um, I was just watching one, I think is on T TNT about scandals and mm -hmm. uh, whether it's 10 years down the line, five years, one year down the line. Um, I feel that it's something that, 
could be done you know within a couple of months yeah. or someone else speaks up more if there is um some legitimate you know truth with everything or as we like, i mean i should i don't know the whole ins and outs with everything apparently it is you know documented so i guess we'll just see what more we learn about what's going on is what will really uh have more people tune in just to find out what happens more but um yeah it doesn't surprise me that something's already being made and now remind me linda the bob costas interview with vince was that a real sports segment or was that something different (sighs) ah so it wasn't inside the nba or anything like that (laughs) i don't i don't because here's the thing yeah here's the thing like i've got the bob costas interview and i'm almost positive it was uh it was a, a real sports segment but i'm also like Picturing Vince and Bryant Gumble, and uh, I'm I'm maybe crossing timelines or something. I think that was where it stemmed from. I'm not 100 percent sure, but did you? I haven't gone back and listened to you and Meathead yesterday um, in your discussion on the opening of Raw and the whole Titus O'Neil segment. But but Monday Night's Raw, that opening segment, did have a little bit of a feel like they might be trying to get ahead of something. Yeah, I'll be touched along that. Of- how the mention of goodwill was brought up, which is true about pro wrestling. You know, we all say it. We're all fans. We all love this fantasy world to step away from um, things in our life outside of that, that may not be as positive or um, something that would make us smile quite like pro wrestling does for us. Um, It was also mentioned that we don't talk politics, um, anything really controversial. So, or anything religious, anything to that sort. So um, I think, I think it was definitely a way to let the WWE universe and wrestling fans worldwide know, hey, you know, we are um, acknowledging this and in a yeah. different way of having, instead of having Vince come out, speak a couple words and disappear where right. it came off to I think most people as a little offsetting. Now you're having your goodwill ambassador come out and address it, but just in a, in a different light. And then yeah. it, you know, with him being his hometown as well as then there was a, um, just a, a segment showing a recent charity event that he was a part of and what WWE was sure. a part of. So I think all in all, it worked well and it was something good. It was definitely something different. Um, and especially with a recent announcement of Raw on USA being TV 14. So I was thinking, oh, is this something like where it's something, a, a different spin where all of a sudden yeah. he'll just get whacked with a chair in the back of the head. We'll see color. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happen, that's though. exactly what we need to welcome us to the TV 14 era. Titus O'Neil, you know, coming out and just getting, a chair shot to the head and bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to welcome back to TV 14. Now I'll tell you, somebody who isn't prone to an occasional blade job uh, might be on his way back, not to WWE, but to AEW. There are reports that AEW is readying for the return sooner rather than later. No specific date, but that it is in the works and it might be approaching quickly. One Kenny Omega returning to action, Linda. Oh, ironically, I saw some posts a lot about All Out coming to the Chicago area Labor Day weekend. Uh, Just seeing that visually and then hearing uh, about Kenny Omega possibly returning very soon. I would feel confident it could happen there. I would love that. I do miss Kenny Omega. He was, I believe he was my top draft pick last year um, before. And then, you know, he later got injured. But... That would be tremendous. I mean, so much. <laughs> I mean, another talk about another huge announcement yeah. from Tony Khan. Once that comes out, if you can even say it's rather, you know, rather it'd be a surprise. But we already kind of have the cat out of the bag kind of thing. But that will be great to see when it happens. Your number one draft pick last year, much like Cody Rhodes was my number one draft pick uh, this year. A man who is still part of Team Nelson Mandela. No, how many, no matter how many little birdies have tried to get in my ear and try uh-huh. to uh, get me to abandon my good dear friend Cody Rhodes, it has not not happened yet. So I definitely I feel for the number one pick being injured, and uh, actually a lot of other people on my. Uh, roster being injured but i'll tell you who was not injured last night to kick off nxt linda was cameron grimes going up against jd mcdonough and uh so while the match was going on we would have joe gacy perched up on you know wherever he was perched up in the nxt arena and you know this i thought this was a, a good match between these two jd mcdonough would eventually pick up the win here another loss for cameron grimes 
here's the thing. Here's what I really wanted to happen. I knew tonight, or last night rather, we were getting the reveal of the schism. Joe, De- Joe Gacy's friends were going to expose themselves on NXT. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe this is it. Maybe these were the two guys under the hoods all along. And we get them, we get Joe Gacy to come down to the middle of the ring to stop the match and they hug. And I would have been so contented with that. Cameron Grimes and J.D. McDonough, uh, the reveal. But that was not to be the case. Uh, Linda, your thoughts on uh, J.D. McDonough picking up the win here in this opening match? That would have been a unique twist. Mm -hmm. Because I did not think of that. Uh, But uh, I was assuming J.D. McDonough would win. Um, You know, anybody that's had a promo package weeks in the making um should most likely go over in their um first big debut or just first big match um but seeing joe gacy surprised me at first and then i was like not really just because we have seen uh cameron grimes uh, you know this roller coaster as they've been saying for him and despite him doing slightly more heelish things to Braun breaker like that whole shoulder incident um still more of a face and you hear the crowd going back into his favor yeah. so putting pitting him against uh, jd mcconnor definitely um was something great i thought but uh seeing joe gacy there and then having cameron grimes losing i, I felt we would get something more from that later in the um episode so our second segment actually fe- featured the big uh reveal from cora j this was the uh the evil villains exposition, if you will, where they tell you their entire plot and what they were thinking the entire time. Um, So I I thought this came across as, I thought she came across good on the mic. There seemed like there were, there was a lot she was trying to fit in. So it came to me where there was good flow. It just, it felt like there was a lot that she was trying to get into with the backstory and the reveal and, uh, you know, this, that, and the other. But I do like Cora Jade as a as a heel villain, and it, in case you didn't get the picture that she was a heel villain, she goes full Alondra Blaze here and dumps the NXT women's uh, tag titles in the trash can along with some whips. Linda, have you ever had any <laughs> whips before? Uh, no, it's funny someone just mentioned that, but I did see that. I guess I wasn't the only one who thought of observing what was in the garbage a little far because there was also like an empty nacho tray you know like those plastic trays you get nachos and there's not nearly yep. enough cheese i saw mm-hmm. that in the garbage as well as the whips so it makes you wonder if they sell whips at the nxt 2.0 arena or if this was something somebody bought uh from home but you know a nice little crunchy cheesy snack um very very low in, in carbohydrates mainly fat and a little bit of protein there so um you know could could be part of a a balanced diet if one so chooses, but not, not bad. They are actually pretty nice little, uh, nice little crunchy cheese snack there. But uh, Linda, since you can't give us a, a review of the, uh, of the whips, uh, what did you think of the, the promo here? I thought it was great. I thought she did well. Um, I feel the crowd was trying to drown her out a little bit, but yeah. she held her own and her coming out of the ring and pulling the Alundra blaze move was something unexpected which is what I love. I love surprises in wrestling. And we got that uh, from Corey Jade there. So this makes sense to do, uh, especially since, you know, she's still technically the tag team champion uh, with Roxanne Perez. So now that they are foes, this makes sense that she would do something so outlandish, so heelish. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. And, and this, this segment was kind of interesting. We had a lot of, uh, kind of sporadic uh, cuts to the crowd <laughs> of, uh, you know, a lot of close-up shots of the crowd. We even got the uh, the guy who's always there every week wearing the different jerseys. I think there was a close-up of him and his reaction to something that Cora Jade said. So they were definitely trying to, trying to milk this for, uh, you know, everything they could there. Uh, we would have Roderick Strong going up against Damon Kemp in a one-on-one match. Two Diamond Mine brethren going at it. Now, this would be interrupted – when we would see Tony D'Angelo's uh, family on the big screen attacking the uh, attacking the Creed brothers, and that would actually play into the finish of this match. Kemp runs backstage, and Roderick Strong with the quick uh, 
I believe it was a, a roll up. It was an offensive maneuver he uses to get the win here uh, over over Damon Kemp. So Roderick Strong showing a little bit of a uh, of some heel tactics here. Yeah, I'm uh, waiting for this to finally happen. The big explosion, if you will. Uh, it's it's been going very back and forth on the whole thing with Roddy and is, when is he going to turn on Diamond Mine? And then he puts he's back in there with them, but now yeah. he's pitting or pitting, excuse me, pitting um, them against one another in matches that are meant to not separate them, just to show. Uh, I'm stronger than you or I'm yeah. better than you. But yeah, we, we did get more of this finally flipping the script uh, when he um, did the roll up on Damon there. So him going back saying, where were you? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's have something happen here. Cause is diamonds, diamond mine still going to be a thing. Seems like it is, but when is this whole thing with Roger finally going to happen? He's, Unless something dramatically changes, maybe he might be a completely different uh, character. Maybe yeah. a new different name. <laughs> well, here's here's what I would like to see. I mean, I think with him and Diamond Mine for so long, you kind of forget what a viable singles competitor he can be in title contention. And you know, if you're going to, if say you know, you need a heel to take it off of Breaker and eventually get it to say, you know, Solo Sokoa. I, I think a Roderick run could be very, very interesting. I mean, this is somebody that you don't have to you don't have to move many pieces around to put in the main event. You know, he's not somebody you necessarily have to build to get back up there. This is this is an automatic, you know, main eventer there. So I think I would like to see the break sooner rather than later and him kind of go off into his his own thing because you just you kind of feel like he has been in the orbit of their storyline for so long. And I mean, this is this is some star power, you know, you can have at the uh, at the top of the card. I'll tell you who else is some star power. My personal favorite tag team in the universe right now. Pretty mm-hmm. deadly trying to get their UK tag titles back going up against Briggs and Jensen. However, it was not to happen. Briggs and Jensen picking up the win here after some botched interference attempts by Pretty Deadly. Yeah, how about those outfits? Yes, uh, nice, nice Western uh, apparel. You know, I, I kind of felt a little bit uh, remiss when I was in Dallas you know, mm-hmm. not having anything, not having anything, you know, fitting like that for, for Gillies. Um, you know, maybe, maybe next time, I mean, not that that couldn't work in, in LA next year, but you know, maybe next time I find myself back in, in Dallas, I can, I can, you know, sport similar. Yeah. I, I think me and me and Meathead could probably get a match. Oh, Why well, don't, uh, I was going to say, who could I be that? I was thinking of, uh, Briggs and Jensen, I was going to say, um, I could be the cowgirl, but I've got the wrong team. We're talking pretty deadly here. Yes, boy. So, um, yeah, I like them, too. I thought this would maybe go back in their favor. I mean, you know, being from the UK, uh, this title, um, being a quick one that um, Briggs and Jensen have had. I mean, them just going overseas to get it and back. I thought maybe this is something where pretty deadly could have gotten it back, but I hope they can do something more with this. I would like to see the uh, NXT UK titles back onto Pretty Deadly. It is just fitting. And uh, I'd like to see more of these shenanigans uh, from the guys. Well, here's the thing. So ever since Joe Gacy's friends showed up in their masks, you've had a theory, correct? An awesome theory, yes. Yeah, yeah, not, not, not an awesome, but an awesome, an awesome theory and uh, we finally got the expose last night, the big reveal of the schism. And uh, they're apparently known now as Jagger Reed and Rip Fowler. But I think we've seen these two before, Linda. Yes. When the re- reveal happened, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I did one of those things like, uh, like they, uh, you can picture a dad doing like after a good sports play, you jump in the air and you got the arm. Uh-huh. Who's, who's, uh-huh. who's famous for doing that? But that's basically what I did in my living room. And I was going to text you away, but I'm like, oh, he's not live. I don't want to spoil yeah. it. But uh, yeah, we got uh, definitely a different look. The beards are gone from the grizzled young veterans. And now uh, and they maybe are a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of some contact manipulation in one of them too. That too. Interesting. And then the whole, um, cult like almost attire, um, the all white and all black. I mean, that's obviously part of Gacy's thing there. But um, 
you know, they are the schism, but I'm, they're still the um, dyad or Ju- Druids. That's what we initially called them, right? The, the men in the cloaks uh, <laughs> is what they were. But that's cool. We got that reveal finally. And uh, we'll see what type of style of wrestling the, the new uh, um, schism will have moving forward. Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, Rip Fowler would be a good name to give next time you go to Starbucks or you order a coffee or something. And who's this for? <laughs> Rip Fowler. <laughs> <laughs> like Rick? No, it's spelled wrong. It's Rick. <laughs> you know what? That's better. Better yet, I think a Starbucks drive through is where you have an order for, for Rip Fowler. Um, so something to something to uh, to aspire to there. Uh, we would get a Braun Breaker pro- promo, and I'll tell you, J.D. McDonough is a, a busy guy. Not only is he beating Cameron Grimes, he uh, he interrupts Braun Breaker here, so we get a little bit more. Um, now, now J.D., we might be getting a little bit more of kind of his gimmick. He had a a, a mannequin there where he uh, you know pointed exactly what he was going to do to injure Braun Breaker. So I would like to see this not be a one-off. You know, if he, if he consistently has his, uh, his mannequin there that he uses to tell opponents what he's going to do to him. I'm kind of intrigued by that possibility. Definitely something different. Um, he definitely knows his, uh, human anatomy, biology, uh, <laughs> um, where to strike Braun Breaker to really take him out. So, yeah, I looks like JD was a busy guy, and this is a nice continuation from uh, that that attack um, post Great American Bash. So um, it's been cool to see. It's also, you know, he had a big part in uh, what I don't know if you're gonna get to that next, but the whole uh, Cameron Grimes um, outburst mm-hmm. later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, no, we, we we went back to Cameron Grimes in the back, and uh, you know, basically just. Uh, wanting the interviewer to leave him alone and said that he wanted that when he lost his U S title. He wanted that when he lost his shot at the NXT title and uh, who should appear, but Joe Gacy once again, trying to recruit him and uh, Cameron Grimes asked Joe Gacy to leave him alone, but that did not seem to deter uh, Gacy. Now I think this can go one of two ways. Either these two are feuding or, you know, Cameron Grimes kind of being hard on luck right now gives uh Gives the schism a second look. I feel it's more of the latter. Uh, yeah. I, I can see that working, but I also would rather that Cameron Grimes be the leader of said faction, but that's Ooh. not going to happen for this one, or maybe he's a temporary or an honorary member for a little bit. And Do then, we, uh, are we going, are we going Daniel Bryan where he was in the Wyatts for a week and, you know, basically uh, had his. <laughs> <laughs> had his uh had his jiffy loop jumper on and mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he's then he turns like that that was a week right it, maybe we went to but like he showed up in the in the coveralls for a week and then that was pretty much it after that perhaps uh <laughs> or something leading to the next big um if it's not a takeover uh, the next big uh former WCW special uh that's going to be on NXT coming up. There you go. Bob that... Wild. Oh, uh, that's exactly next month. <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly what they need. You know what, Linda? How would how would Sturgis react to them taking NXT on the road? <laughs> you know, you know what? You know what? I don't even need it to be a network special. I will gladly give them my hard earned money to see pretty deadly wrestle at Sturgis. <laughs> in that outfit, the cowboy house. Yes. Or they come out in some, some leather attire. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to happen. That would put NXT 2.0 on the map. Map. I'll tell you somebody else who would probably be in Sturgis. Is I, uh, your... Uh-huh. Sorry. To, to that point, um, I forgot to mention this to Meathead, too, that uh, Heavy On, that promotion in wrestling... Um, was at Rockfest as well, and Eric Rowan. Red Eric, Ro- Eric Rowan. Where, where, where's Eric Rowan at? Well, he was a part of the Heavy On Wrestling show that was at Rockfest. So, I while I didn't see his match particularly because there was um, various shows throughout the whole weekend, 
I saw him in the Rockfest recap, and how fitting, considering we just discussed how NXT 2.0 uh, could be brought to Sturgis for Hog Wild. So having a wrestling wrestling ring at a huge festival, um, let's keep it rolling. Let's, let's have it happen. Uh, when did, did he have Did he have a Rubik's cube with him? You know, he's a Mensa member, right? I didn't see because I didn't see uh, the entire match there. But while we're talking about jumpsuits and wrestling at the at a festival, it, that that just came to mind. And wrestling uh, academics, we would also see your new favorite modern mathematical superhero, Linda Axiom, wrestle uh, Dante Chen with a uh, quick win. Now, let me ask you this. I mean, do you think uh, you think there's a much of a market for a mathematical superhero? <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, I don't know if a mathematical superhero necessarily has to be in a mask, luchador, um, but it is different. It does sway away because, you know, we already have uh, Andre Chase. We have uh, yeah. a professor. He, so a mathematician doesn't necessarily have to have on glasses and um, uh, a sweater vest. That kind of I'd like outfit. I'd like to see some interaction from them when they get back from uh, from their field trip. Yeah, they need to they need to interact. Here's the thing, Linda. If you want to make him a heel and not that you should make him a heel because he promotes education. But let's be honest, WWE is running a storyline right now where um, they, they're making a traumatized veteran, a heel. So anything is possible. Um, Uh, You know, if they're going to turn Lacey, then Mm -hmm. they can turn this guy and having pass out uh, math problems to the crowd, you know, like a little, uh, (laughs) like a little math test. Yes. Yes. Um, I mean, I think there's there's potential here. Now, our main event of the evening, a 20-woman battle royal to determine the number one contender for Mandy Rose's NXT women's title. Uh, the big reveal here during the intros was a returning Zoe Stark. Now, the uh, match would actually come down to tri- Tiffany Stratton and Joey Star- or Zoe Stark, rather, a lot of back and forth, a lot more false finishes than you traditionally see in a battle royal, even the Royal Rumble. Like there was a lot more action on the apron and, uh, you know, both competitors doing a great job of, you know, making sure only one foot touched and keeping mm-hmm. their balance here. We thought Zoe Stark uh, was the winner eliminating Tiffany Stratton. Then we would see Cora Jade, who was never officially eliminated, return. Zoe Stark eliminates her as well. Zoe Stark, your winner and new number one contender for the women's NXT title. Yeah, I was very impressed uh, at how well the ladies did in this battle royal. I don't recall, at least any time as of the past couple of years, a 20-woman battle royal taking place on NXT. So kudos to the ladies there. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And being a part of a battle royal um, when I was at OVW, still am, but I met earlier this year for the uh, our Nightmare Rumble. Uh, while I wasn't ever in a situation where it was me with um, a lot of ladies in the ring trying to, you know, get somebody over the top rope, um, I it, it, it's just it's just different watching it and having yeah. done it to some oh, extent. Absolutely. So um, seeing how well they kept things into play, um, even just the little things like you said on the apron, as well as uh, Wendy Chu on her pillow bed um, and um, they own that the, the, the gorgeous tag team how she caught her partner and then you know got i think kicked and dropped her just little things like that i mean i think they put a lot into this because i mean there's not i don't see a ton more battle royals really taking place anytime soon so the ladies were giving it their all and kudos to them um and very excited to have seen the return of zoe stark been out with this since november so not that she was forgotten but she just hasn't been shown in any type of like packages or like the return of uh, Zoe Stark, even yet, it was a huge surprise and great to see. She looked great. I forgot just how much of a dominant uh, contender she is there. So cool to see her win. I did remember about Cora Jade, and I was hoping that Zoe Stark would still get that win. Her and Tiffany Stratton at the very end, that was awesome yeah. to see. Um, but more deserving, I feel, for Zoe Stark and her return. And then um, her throwing over Cora Jade, boom, it's set. I would like to see more of this. Uh, feud that will be a ruin between Zoe Stark and um, Mandy Rose, which they also reminded us that it was toxic attraction that took out Zoe Stark to begin with, with that injury. 
Absolutely. A lot of, uh, you know, built in story there. And I feel like NXT the last few weeks, they've done a good job of, you know, giving us these storylines to become invested in and having matches announced for the show. Um, you know, I at least the last several weeks, if not before, you know, I get my WWE NXT 2.0 email the afternoon prior to 2.0 with a rundown of the match card, which, uh, you know, it's it's not they don't have as much outline as say AEW does from show to show, but NXT 2.0 probably more so than any of the WWE properties right now are doing, you know, a little bit more of a solid official card, um, you know, for their weekly TV, which I think is a move in the right direction. Well, the direction that we're going to be moving in tomorrow, actually a little bit of an interesting Thursday morning show. It will not be myself and Meathead, but I believe it's actually you and the man they call Meathead tomorrow morning. Correct, Linda? Yes, I will be on board to discuss uh, whichever night of Fighter Fest this will be. Well, this is the everything barbed wire, blood and guts, everybody's going to bleed and get cut match, I think, between Kingston and, and Chris Jericho. But uh, make sure you – yeah, make sure you tune in for the fallout from that. And also when you find out what the favorite thing uh, that the man they call Meatheads has ever found in a trash can, what his favorite uh, item that he's got out of a trash can is. So make sure to join us tomorrow morning. For Linda Kay, this is Matthew Thomas. We'll talk to you soon.